Ben, thank you for joining us on the Alternative Cinema Show. Thank you for having me. Uh, ben, have you, having won so many awards for uh, Argo, you must have been deluged with projects and scripts to direct. But uh, yeah, like some, I don't know, deluged, but definitely I got some nice offers, yeah. But we see you, we have seen you since playing demanding uh, roles and acting. Um, why is acting so important to you when you can direct whatever you want? Yeah, they're, they're both equally interesting to me. I've, I've been acting qu quite a bit longer than I've been directing and started acting when I was seven years old. Uh, it feels very much a part of who I am and what I want to do and I hope I get to do it for a very long time still. Um, directing, yes, it gives you a b bigger sense of authorship. You got to get to tell every part of the story. But it also takes a bigger investment. It's a lot more of your time. You have to really love it. I don't think I could have directed this movie. It's too dark, you know. It's too upsetting in a way. David, he loves that stuff. You know, he kind of feeds off of that. So, uh, what what were the ingredients in this project that attracted you? Disappeared three days ago. I had nothing to do with the disappearance of my wife. I have nothing to hide. Sammy got friends we can talk to? No, not really. You don't know if she has friends. You don't know what she You know, has. working with a, a, a really interesting and important director is what was most appealing. I think he was, uh, you know, because I wanted to be able to learn from him, to pick up some tricks, to find stuff I could steal. Uh, you know, I, increasingly, as an actor, I find that it's just all about the director. You know, you find a director you want to work with, that's the way to do it. That's the best bet you can make. And David's not made a bad movie. Have you learned new stuff from him in directing? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm a different guy than David. I have different tastes. I, my approach is slightly different. Um, but I've learned the way he works. And that's useful because there's a tool that you can, you know, you can steal from Fincher. You can, I can steal from Malick. I can steal from Michael Bay. You know, there's all different kinds of filmmakers that I've had the advantage to work with and been exposed to and watch uh, what they do. And that's... Very helpful as a director. Most directors never get to see other directors work. The character you play, Nick, he's different than regular protagonists where we root to from beginning to end. Uh, in his case, the audience's empathy oscillates between liking and disliking him. How challenging was playing, or how fun was it playing? It was much more interesting to play a guy. It was more like a character part in a leading role. And David kind of abhors the notion of likability. As a lack of empathy. Amy lost a lot of blood in there. Then somebody mopped it up. Why do they mop up the blood if they're trying to stage a crime scene? I finally realized I am frightened of my own husband. I would draw you, because if you do a deposition, what I, I believe say? that you had to have empathy for the character to, on some level. You had to be able to see where he was coming from. But as you point out, yeah, sometimes you think he, he may have done something really, really quite bad. And sometimes you go, like, I can understand where this guy's from. And that was fun. It was fun to calibrate, you know, the audience's expectations and the audience's opinion of the character in ways that you usually don't get to do. Because as you point out, the protagonist has to be you know, Mr. Smart and Mr. On Top of It and always doing the right thing. Amy, who are you? A, I'm an award-winning scrimshander. B, I'm a moderately influential warlord. Hmm. C, I write personality quizzes for magazines. Well, the thing about Nick that he is drawn from reality, it reflects more reality than regular protagonists because we all um, have masks that conceal our dark secrets. Uh, did you feel that kind of empathy with him? Yeah, I felt that, that the movie was suggesting uh, something really interesting, which was that, that, as you point out, we do wear masks, particularly as we're you know, getting into relationships. We want other people to like us, and so we show the best sides of ourselves. The downside of that is that eventually you're in the relationship and the person's got to see the whole you. And that's where marriage really starts. And that's where a lot of the hard work really starts, because now you're, now you're facing a real person, not a manufactured person, not, not a mask. Um, and I hadn't seen or heard anything lately that had dealt with that, that issue, and so that was very attractive. Well, the media is less forgiving, at least in the movie, to Nick, um, turning him into a pariah, accusing him of killing his wife. Have you ever felt that you were a victim of this re rating obsessed media of today? Yeah, well, for one, one thing, there's a sort of news and entertainment merger where sometimes it's hard to tell the difference in the United States. 
And there's definitely, frankly, a laziness in the media, which is like the, you're running so many stories, you're doing so much stuff, it's easier to just Google somebody and look what the last person said. And so you keep a narrative about somebody that may be completely outdated. Monkey? A trained monkey who doesn't get lethal injections. She's going to eat you alive. You assaulted her? It's not good enough for you? I hit her? It's not even close. Absolutely not. I never touched her. Man of my dreams, this man of mine may kill me. What about my son?